Ever since Jimmy Butler got to Miami, they have had one problem. In 2020, they reached the finals, but lost in six to the Lakers. A lot of people thought, oh, it's early. Bam's 22 years old, rookie Tyler Hero, but two years later, came within one shot of the finals again. Then last season, they make it, but one problem holds them back. Jimmy is not a championship number one. They have done nothing to fix that. And you can hate on that statement all you want, but Jimmy actually admits it. During the 2023 finals, he said, I am not a scorer. Just because I score a lot of points one game doesn't make me a scorer. I don't press to score. I press to win. If I pass the ball and we win, I don't care. If I shoot the ball and we win, I don't care. Exactly. That is what they needed in the first round against the Bucks as the eighth seed. So Jimmy drops 38 points per game, looks like his father, Michael Jordan. But in games four, five, and six against Boston, Butler cooled off and the Seas came back. Then game seven steps up taking 28 shots. That's more than he took the whole season because they needed it. But in the finals, a little snapshot is Denver's clinching game five. Through three quarters, Butler went two for 10. Where was playoff Jimmy? Then with the game on the line, 27 seconds left, he passes directly to the other team. How does one of the most clutch players ever do that? By being forced into the wrong role. It's the one problem that's killed several chances to get a ring. But now they have one last shot to get it right because Jimmy is 34 years old. But Damian Lillard demands a trade this offseason, wants to go to Miami, and they lose out to the Bucks. Bradley Beal's got a no trade clause, but he'll go to the Heat. And the Suns swoop in to get him. Heat wanted Drew Holiday, not as bad as Boston. So are they finally gonna get Jimmy a true number one or just be a good team we all remember that never got over the hump? But first, I am always overwhelmed around the holidays on what to buy everyone, especially my wife. But today's sponsor, Blue Nile, has you covered. They are the original online jeweler and have the largest selection of independently graded diamonds and pieces priced significantly below traditional retailers. Gold and silver styles, gemstone jewelry, and classic diamond pieces, including a new lab-grown selection to make your budget go even further. Speaking of my wife, she asked, can we get something for the holidays from Blue Nile? I said, sure. So I found these Premier Akoya cultured pearl stud earrings in 18K white gold. Whatever that means, I'm not sure. But the good news is they have jewelry experts available 24 seven by a phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. It is all GIA graded lab grown along with their natural diamond pieces. And don't worry about returns. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Every Blue Nile order is insured and shipped for free in discreet packaging. So don't even think about it. Just give them something you know they're gonna love. Go to bluenile.com slash amhoops to find the perfect jewelry gift today. Use code AMHOOPS, get 50 bucks off purchases on over $500 or more, thanks again to Blue Nile. Well, we will look at what their options are this year, but remember, they won't just trade for anyone. Dame and Bradley Beal weren't good enough to go all in for. This is gonna be a very short list. But Jimmy heard all the talk about their bad off season, so he came to media day with his emo haircut. Sure enough, they start one for four. But when no one was looking, Miami went on a seven game win streak. How? With amazing defense. Miami has the fourth best D in the East by creating a ton of turnovers with seven guys averaging at least a steal. Behind Jimmy and Bam, amazing depth, including rookie Jaime Jaquez, who is exactly what they hoped from a four year college player. And Duncan Robinson is back. Remember how dude had like the worst contract in the NBA? Well, now he's a 50, 40, 90 guy again, playing big minutes. Bam can defend in space and at the rim unlike anybody else in the NBA. But defense has never been their issue. What they need is someone who could drop 30 plus on any given night. That's why Dame would have been perfect. You know how Dame and Giannis are kind of struggling to gel right now? Dude, he would have fit right into Miami. It got so bad last year that before their amazing playoff run, Miami scored 110 points per game. Dead last in the NBA. And in the finals, they failed to score 100 in four or five games. How does that even happen? Do you need a bigger flashing light that you need a superstar? Oh, but Pat Riley didn't want to make the big offer. He wants us to think, 
Oh, we were fine not getting Dame. I will say this, that we never offered Tyler Hero in any trade. We have never shopped him to anybody. People call him all the time, but I like our team. I'm not worried. I think we have a great chance. Oh, really? How is that great chance going? Well, the seven game win streak was snapped by the Bulls, who came back from down 21. The Heat's offense stalled so bad, Bam scored zero points in the fourth quarter. Then, same thing happened three nights later in New York. It's gotten so bad, the Heat have the second worst fourth quarter offense in the NBA. It's the same nightmare happening all over again. Heat fans are about to watch Jimmy Butler do amazing things, but end up ringless. This is insane. So what can they do to fix it? Well, as soon as Zach Levine came on the market, people immediately linked him with the Heat. Zach is a two-time All-Star and one of the best pure scorers in the game. What would the Heat offer? Apparently, nothing. They quickly leaked, we're not interested. The reason? He's basically an upgraded version of Tyler Hero, who they already have for much less money. The next three years, Tyler makes 27, 29, and 31 million. Zach is at 43, 46, and almost 50. Taking that on would put them in the second apron and the new CBA kills expensive teams. It would be almost impossible to make trades. For what? Levine has been in one playoff series and was horrible losing in five games. We have no idea if he's worth it. A Heat reporter said that isn't worth it considering Hero's ascent before his injury and the fact that Levine isn't considered a top 25 player. Oh, so they need a top 25 guy. Who is on that list? Well, this is a list of who I consider the top 25 NBA players. At the top, Jokic, Giannis, and Steph. All champions plan like MVPs. I put Luka fourth, because even though he's never won, whenever he's in the playoffs, dude's a beast. KD, LeBron, and Kawhi are next, because they're healthy, and I would take any of them in a finals game seven over the rest of the list. Joel Embiid, only ninth because he's won an MVP, but dude can't get out of the second round. And it wasn't all hard in last year, Embiid sucked too. But what's important on this list is who could the Heat target? There are only two names, Donovan Mitchell and Pascal Siak. Pascal is a versatile two-way player, but the best fit is Mitchell an explosive score who is clutch exactly what they need. And the good news, dude might be available. ESPN went as far as to say, I don't think there's any chance Donovan Mitchell signs an extension in Cleveland ever. And if it was up to me, I would trade Donovan Mitchell today. The reason? Spider will be an expiring contract next year. So if Cleveland wants to maximize his value, gotta trade him now. Heat Check made a great video showing how much better the Cavs play without Donovan Mitchell. They move the ball around and don't just stand around watching Spida. The problem here is he will cost a ton. Miami hadn't been comfortable going all in before. They gotta go all in to get Mitchell. Other teams are gonna want him like the Sixers, so Miami has to outbid the competition. Their best offer is Donovan Mitchell for Tyler Hero, Jaime Jaquez, and control of five first round picks. A great trade because Cleveland actually doesn't even want Bam out of bio. They already have two great young centers. They keep Darius Garland at point, slot Hero in who needs the ball a lot less than Mitchell. Hawkes is leading rookies in steals, fifth in points and shoots 51% from the field, 40% from deep. And five picks is huge. Look, I know that's a lot for a one-way star, but time is running out. I mean, Jimmy Butler is in his mid-30s, and unless he wants to be the next Charles Barkley who never won a ring, Spada is the best player they can get. Or be the next Chris Paul, a Hall of Famer without a chip, but CP is also in the news for his rivalry with referee Scott Foster. The beef is a lot deeper than people think, involving his 14-year-old son.